Okay, so uh, what we are going to do today is to try to put together more or less what we know about uh, um, heuristic evaluation and visual design and compare them or apply them to the um, Hall of Fame and Hall of Shame submissions that you made on week number one of the course. Okay, so we are going to revise. So it, it wasn't a, a wasted work we asked you to do at that time. We set it aside and now we are pulling it uh, out of the box uh, to analyze and to see and to compare what we say could, uh, you know, express or could uh, the opinion you gave or uh, the, the comments you made on those interfaces at that time where actually we didn't have any specific knowledge about uh, human computer interaction and we compare them with what we know today and whether you know, we would uh, select the same interfaces and uh, we would understand the reasons why we liked uh, or didn't like them. Hmm? So the idea is just to exploit uh, the Hall of Fame and Hall of Shames uh, uh, to understand something better about uh, how we can apply the methods that we already, we already know. So actually we have uh, uh, 66 uh, submissions in the Hall of Fame. So there were 33 people who submitted a couple of, the, of the screenshots and uh, 66 uh, uh, submissions in the Hall of Shame by, by all of you. So of course we won't have time <laughs> to open or to see or to comment all of them. I just selected a short list uh, maybe to make some points uh, uh, so the idea is that uh, we have a, a lot of screens that were considered uh, successful. Maybe I will make, spend two minutes uh, in having a look at them in quick succession. So these are all screens that were considered good, good interfaces in the Hall of Fame. It's only a couple of seconds each, but at least we can get the feeling of what kind of interfaces all of you have selected as good examples. And then we'll see the comments you gave and find whether there is some regularity. Okay, there was some people that hoped I would buy them an iPhone 13, but going to do that. You see that there are some repetitions. Yeah, this one comes often. This is quite debatable. Uh. Not my opinion. <laughs> you see that there may be a couple of screens for which we, have, we may have some second thought, but you see that we are flashing screens at three seconds each, uh, and three seconds are more than enough to grasp the structure of the interface and the main functions that are accessible to the users. Even if there's something we don't know, more or less we can feel. Okay, again, people. This also surprised me a bit. Again, Netflix. You see that the Google Maps, Netflix, and uh, Airbnb were mentioned more than once. Twitch also. Amazon again. Uh, 
and another Airbnb, so we are not repeating them, okay? This all unique submissions. Somebody's even happy. This is playing safe, selecting Google. Twitter, Twitter also came up more than once. This is Wikipedia. Music score, I guess. A newspaper. Okay, Trello. Twitter again. Sometimes they selected Twitter as the website and sometimes the application. There are a lot of online shops. And another matching application, YouTube. And we are over. Okay, so this was the list uh, of all the good interfaces that you selected. And here I did some exercise of selecting the motivations. No? You remember you had to write uh, why did you choose this one? And they try to copy or to extract uh, in a very you know, bottom up way some keywords. And you see that uh, there are some keywords that are recurrent here simple, intuitive, minimalistic, uh, clear. Uh, it has many functionalities, well organized, uh, it's easy to understand, simple. Okay, we, we know that now that there are some you know, rules uh, that tells us, uh, that tell us that the um, simplicity and clearness and directness of the interface uh, is, uh, you know, uh, positive for the users. But uh, uh, I think there's a common theme here is that uh, there are a few elements and it's clear and they are in a way coherent. They all tell you the same message and they tell you what is this website or application for and how to do it. I think the message here, I, I didn't copy all the 66 one, but I stopped nearly at half of the list because of course there were the same um, reasons or the same concept they were uh, repeating themselves, okay? So guiding the user, giving information, having, not having too many items, uh, so uh, easy to understand and well organized as opposed to confusing, for example, okay? So we have maybe all the information or many functionalities, but these are organized in a good way so that it doesn't confuse or overwhelm the users. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we have the bad list. We can do the same. So I am putting you in a bad mood right now. Okay, this was some programming error, basically. So uh, yeah, there are some websites that were in the both categories. That was interesting. Video streaming is also something which, which tends to be on both categories. A mistake by Google, it's nice, I like it. And we have a lot, a long list of schools here then that we are going to see. Greg list that never updated the interface in the last 30 years. Another school. This is uh, Municipality of Turing, another municipality. So you are very fond of municipalities and schools. This is an association. Another municipality. An email, you see, an email is like quite standard. How, how can you make it wrong? Okay, you can. Discord, we already saw some discords in the, in the other list, even here. So there's no consensus about those. This is a game. 
is curious because games never appear in the good list. something I'm going to comment. Uh, some of them, of course, will be selected for. I think the common theme is that a lot of stuff uh, on the screen, okay, this was a category by itself. There's a lot of stuff in the screen. I would say a lot of information, but a lot of items that when you are lost among them, you they are not providing information anymore. There's some odd looking websites, but it's not the style that is a problem. It's the density of information or the disorder in the information. This is the second time the GPT comes out. Città di Torino is also consulate this, I don't remember. Uh, this one is also a treasure hunt for finding something. And let's just remember that some of these screens are really you know, ugly, ugly at first sight. But there's somebody who's working on them every day, and they probably think they're good. Right? That's why they would change them. There'd be some terrible colors or extra packs of information. They, they didn't hear about grid designs, these people. They have just put everything expected. I don't know, somebody doesn't like word. Hmm? Okay, so, and I did this, the same exercise of finding what are the concepts, the reasons, the keywords that tell us that some interface is not good. Remember, you, you wrote those sentences when you knew a, and nothing about uh, usability. So it's basically the experience as a user that drove you to give this, uh, this comment. Hmm? Too many items. Colors are unconventional. Uh, more relevant uh, or more interesting information is mixed uh, with less interesting information. Hmm? The text is hard to read, overloaded information, inconsistent behavior, too many items on screen, too many clicks to make, lots of useless information. Navigation is just a list that doesn't help you, you know, in finding the paths that you need. But basically, I think that the most frequent comment is there's too much stuff. So less is more, or we already know it. Okay, G going to the point and only showing information that is needed for performing a task. Not the, the attempt here is put a lot of information there, and 90% of that is not relevant to the users, probably. Hmm? And they contribute just to a sense of general confusion of uh, uh, not knowing the way to go. Hmm? Um, I like this one in Finland getting scanned. So it's, it went so hard, so bad, this website that you, know, you are starting to, to, um, to consider whether it's, we can trust it or it's a, a, a fake website. Hmm? Um, crowded. So the, the usage of spacing is all, um, often neglected, you see that there were very few spaces, very few white areas, and so that somebody was trying to fill all of them. So basically, as a general comment, of course, we have a lot of different categories, different websites, there were no uh, say constraints, so you were left, left uh, free to submit, uh, and you submitted actually a wide range of solutions. Many usability problems can be found at first glance. Okay, so we really wonder why they're still there if just, you know, at the first look you can, we saw, remember, yeah, each website only for three seconds, okay? But uh, we already understood that there were some problems with them. 
okay? The major problems take less than one second to get, okay? Um, some targets are easy to shame. Hmm? Uh, they are easy to target, easy targets for shaming. Uh, and which are those? There are municipalities and universities and schools uh, and public services, they were frequent. Hmm? Uh, selling transportation tickets and so on. So there's, there's a pattern here no, that we are trying to comment. Um, and some are easy to, to praise. Say, okay, these are good. And you see that in many cases, uh, you, the multi binaural enterprises tend to do some good results. Huh? It's, of course, it means that they understood the, the importance and they invested, of course, because well, a good design doesn't come uh, out, of the, out of, the, of, the, of the ground by itself. Hmm? Um, so actually, we are sort of understanding that there is a, there is a market drive for usability. If I have more money, I actually I am able to produce or to invest. I understand that to, okay, um, I'm not sure how to resolve the chicken and egg problem. Are these applications more successful because they are easier to use? Or they are easy to use because they are developed by a successful enterprise that has the money for doing that? I guess there's a cycle, the circle there, okay? And there's a reverse cycle in public institutions where there was no initial drive for making a good design. The, the main driver were different. Uh, there were sort of visibility or showing something that we are doing, but not really about serving. There was one comment saying, okay, this website is 90% news, uh, events and news and information, but I really want uh, the services. I don't care about the news. The news is just for f feeling good themselves, right? for promoting themselves, not for offering services. And it doesn't work because the user doesn't care. The interesting part is that some websites were listed in both categories. And this would suggest a split of user base. Maybe some users are more expert or more, you know, uh, familiar with some kind of interface. And so they like, uh, they like some interfaces that seem too complex for others. Well, uh, one example is, is Discord, for example. Okay, maybe many of you are using it uh, hours a day, and so they find it very natural because it's very powerful. But some other people, like myself, for example, uh, I'm not sure about uh, where I should go, what's the difference between a server and a channel and a voice channel, and, a channel. and so there's a lot of uh, background knowledge that, that is needed in order to operate it, uh, uh, say, well. And the same for Slack, also Slack was, was mentioned there. So there are complex uh, tools uh, that feel uh, super powerful and super fast to use uh, to people that are already, you know, uh, went, already went through the learning curve. And so in this case, uh, so uh, this also means that uh, probably you know, the, the, um, the target users are an important uh, consideration to make. So I'm doing something for people that are going to invest a significant amount of time in learning more advanced uh, uh, facilities. Okay, but I know, I should know at the same time that I'm leaving out or I'm making less satisfied or more dissatisfied the, user, the novice user. So I will have a problem in onboarding new users unless they will not do that because they like the application. Maybe they will do that you know, for the network efforts because every other friend uh, is already there, or the teacher told us that we should, we should not use this platform, so we are there mm, due to external forces. Mm. Um, in general, I didn't report this year. It was, in, in many cases, especially for the bad websites, it was very difficult to synthesize the goal of the website in one sentence, okay? One of the questions we ask you is, uh, what is this website for? What is the application for? And many responses were long uh, or very generic. Hmm? So this means that the focus of the application is sometimes not very clear. One application tries to do too many things, so how can you describe it in one sentence? You remember the work we did in the first week of the course. 
try to find one need uh, uh, to, to, to satisfy and to create an application for. And so doing, I want to do, solve this problem and this other one and maybe the third one creates problem. And you see it because the functionality becomes less consistent with itself and the, the scope, the goal of the website is not clear anymore. People cannot tell you in three words what it's for. Of course, there were some screenshots that were really not very significant like what do I care about the, the, the login page? They all look together. They, lo, 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 sorry. they lo, all look similar. There were maybe four or five uh, screenshots of the home page of Airbnb before login. What does it tell me? Nothing. Huh? Or the um, download pair for, for, for the Immuni app. Hmm? So, of course, Immuni doesn't have a, a meaningful user interface because it just sits in the background but the presentation website is just static, static page. So in that case, it was very difficult to speak about the usability or to comment on that. And there were some repetitions. Some probably are from people that really discovered the same website from different, Amazon is very famous, so a lot of people uh, uh, submitted it. You know, Comuni Torino is also, we are living in Turin, so probably you are all familiar with that, so there were more than one submission. In some cases, I felt that there were people that maybe were sitting together and they submitted the same, the same design, which, which is perfectly okay, okay, but we are missing some, some opportunity or some variability. Okay, so uh, today we can start, or you could start, huh, pick out the, the, the designs that you submitted, maybe try to think about them in the light of the needs and usability heuristics uh, or in the light of the visual design uh, principles that we already, we know and we started to, we are starting to apply to our own design. We will probably have the same conclusions, but with better words, okay? Something that, uh, uh, let me go back here, uh, something say that is not well organized, and if you are trying to, to, to make this comment to the author of the website, you will start fighting, or at least arguing, no, I think it's organized. No, I think not. Uh, it's too confusing. But you see, everything is there, and there would be no, an endless debate uh, because you know it's like uh, if you are if you walk in the street and you see a person with a dog. Uh, I don't see a child, but it's also true for children. And you, if you say this is a, this is a this is an ugly dog, okay, you cannot. Uh, the people will get very angry with you. First of all, it's not your business, but especially I, I see it as a very nice dog, whatever it is. Uh, um, and the same for websites. Uh, the creations are our children, our pets, uh, I would say. And so we are not very open to accept uh, criticism for, from outside, especially if these criticisms are general. Okay, we, you expressed here something you, you felt. I feel something wrong. I think I feel something is inconsistent, is uh, annoying, is complex, but you're thinking about yourself, basically, okay? About the impression that the bad interface gave to you, which is perfectly okay, but uh, you cannot turn it into a suggestion or, to a, or into a correction or into a design, uh, let's say, uh, suggestion. Hmm? And the role of the rules that we see as heuristics, as, uh, as uh, design principle and so on, is to turn, let's say, uncomfortable feelings from the users into the reason, let's say, um, objective reason that uh, that interface is, why that interface is creating that feeling into you, okay? Sorry for the sentence, I got lost in a little bit. Um, so we are, if we try to rephrase the same comments using these heuristics, it would be much easier you know, to show to the creator of the website, okay, you see, you have this problem. It's not just my feeling. You know? It's an objective rule, it's an objective criteria that you didn't fulfill or you didn't think about it, or it's at least uh, uh, to be considered. Um, so we'll try to maybe 
try to reread uh, some of the designs in this slide. Uh, this is also a statistics that I made uh, about the submissions. Uh, the first table reports whether you were submitting a mobile application or a website. And in the two columns, uh, the cross and the mark is about the Hall of Shame and Hall of Fame, of course. Um, and you see that uh, mobile apps are much more frequently in the Hall of Fame section. So there's more attention in usability in the case of mobile apps uh, than we have in uh, uh, websites. Websites are more or less balanced, okay? More or less. Uh, the number, I don't do exactly 66 because I counted them by hand, so I slipped some of them, of course, I'm sure. Okay, don't, don't make the addition. They, they won't match, okay? But never mind. We, we just need a, a feeling to discuss, okay? So this means that there's more awareness and more investment also in good user experience for mobile applications, and much less for websites. There may be a lot of different reasons. One is that uh, an, a difficult to use mobile application will disappear very quickly because there will be immediately other 10 other applications that do the same thing that look better. So they tend not to survive too, long, uh, too much. Second, creating a, a mobile application is more expensive than creating a website. You need more expertise, you need uh, to do constant updates, uh, to take into account uh, Android and iOS, uh, you need, in the end, you need more money than building a website. So there's a, you know, a higher step to, to enter. And uh, uh, third, uh, websites, have, many websites have a, a longer history. Okay? They were created many years ago when maybe there was less attention to these problems. Users are, were there were many users around, and the people were just learning how to create good websites and good applications. And there's no excuse, okay? Even Amazon was created many years ago, but then it evolved every month, every couple of months, there's something new, they are changing something. Many other websites, like the one for the public utilities, sorry, for the public institutions, um, were created and never changed so much after, after the creation. So they were created without maybe even knowing what this web would become, which this web thing would become, and then there was so many content already there that it was really difficult uh, to, to change anything. So today we are still, um, say, uh, captive in the design that was made maybe in the 90s where all the design rules were different and maybe all the awareness about user experience uh, were different. All the wave of usability or, or, and of expectations for usability that came after the smartphone uh, were, the design was made before this wave. So there was a, a very few people that knew what usability was or what user experience was when they designed uh, those websites. They only talked about structure and content, hmm? not about user experience. And so today we still have the legacy of those uh, designs or of the decisions. Hmm? And they are still sitting here, of course. And about, about categories, I try to do a very broad categorization. Um, public uh, websites, uh, schools, universities are by far the worst category, uh, in your opinion, okay? It's your submission, don't look at me. Um, I'm very fond of the Polytechnic Law website. Um, and we, we, we could understand why, okay? There were some good examples, but most of them are highly troubled, okay? Uh, some good examples are in the e-commerce and shop, so, uh, online shopping websites, uh, which is hardly surprising. These people are making their, their living through their, their website. So if the, if the website would create obstacles in, uh, in buying the goods, uh, they would lose real money. Hmm? While a public institution 
if a user finds some trouble, is not ga gaining nor losing any money. Uh, it's sort of indifferent from them, okay? And so you see some driving forces behind. Hmm? Traveling, maps, uh, uh, and, and so on. Again, you know, there's a lot of uh, online information that you help for traveling. So if you have a traveling application that doesn't lead people to your hotel or to your Airbnb, uh, you're losing money. So it's all of your interest. Uh, to make it easy to use. Hmm? So there's a lot of economic driving force. And also, there's a big business today in all the streaming, so from uh, Netflix uh, to um, Spotify and stuff like that, uh, that drive, they're selling you content. Hmm? Uh, and people are really paying, okay? Just imagine, imagine uh, at least in Italy, how angry we are every year because we have to pay the tax for the Rai television, for national television, but we are willing to pay for Netflix and Amazon Prime and whatever, and, 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 and Disney Plus, uh, you know, similar amounts of money. Hmm? We are not angry, we choose to do that. In one case, we are obliged to do that, and we try every way to avoid it. And, uh, um, but those other ones, uh, it's actually something that they live out of our um, uh, monthly or yearly payment. Hmm? And so they should provide a good experience. Um, library resources news are doc documentation websites, uh, um, news, newspapers. It's also, I, I, I don't remember, but there was only, probably only one submission of a newspaper in the, in the good part. All of them were in the bad part. And it's also very surprising because it means that this, seg this segment of the industry, which actually are, should be selling information, and information is the most intangible of goods, so it should be particularly suitable for, the, for an online presence. Okay, so people are paying for Spotify just to be able to sell a play playlist in order instead of just, uh, uh, not, you know, in, the, in the case of Spotify, you're not paying for the music. You're paying for the extra functionality of organizing it and of choosing it, okay? The music will be there anyway. It's different from Netflix where if you don't pay, you don't see anything. And people are not paying for newspapers. And some newspapers are still didn't get still don't get the, don't have business models for providing their information on the, on the web. And what you see about newspaper is they're trying to put more stuff into that. And more stuff means maybe a, a, big, uh, a bigger uh, background with the advertising of unrelated stuff, a lot of small ads mixed with the articles in order to try in a desperate attempt uh, to recover part of their money, but it's not going to work. It's only going to make it worse for them. Hmm? So we, we see a segment that has, uh, maybe there's a lot of free content, it's all low quality content, but uh, we don't know. Hmm? It's, it's a big crisis. Of, uh, we have a lot of digital content, but uh, inter entertainment, basically. Okay, music and video sells well, mostly, but information doesn't sell so well. Hmm? And we also, have, uh, I find it interesting that there was this category, basically the chat, uh, email, you know, office stuff, okay, for organizing group of work, uh, were, were, say, equally split between good and bad uh, uh, impressions. And this may be the split of user experiences, like we uh, already mentioned in the case of, of Discord, for example. Okay, so some users uh, are more custom, some, some might be more complex interfaces because it's part of their job, because they're so custom, and some other maybe find it more difficult. So this is also an area for improvement, probably. Uh, in the other cases, the numbers are so small that I say I wouldn't have any significant comment to make. So, can we discover a pattern here? Is there a difference between public and private institutions, or maybe better for profit or non profit institutions? 
probably yes. No? There is some, some correlation between the success of a given application and uh, its usability. There's a difference between startups and big corporations. Mm, I don't know, maybe not. Um, if if startups wants, uh, if, if a startup wants to emerge and to be noticed, it must invest on uh, on good user experience. Otherwise, it will never you know, be seen or be known by anybody. Uh, for the corporation, it depends. Of course, they have the resources to to innovate, their resources to uh, improve. It depends on their policy whether they value this. Uh, as a, as a good investment. But it doesn't mean, so it, you, you don't need to be very large, very big or have a lot of resources to, good, uh, to create a, a good user experience. And there are both good and bad examples on both sides of this comparison. And probably the, a better comparison is uh, comparing an emergent service of, or company with the incumbent one. Uh, Incumbent means uh, a company that already owns uh, a segment of the market, and another, a new entry, uh, a new entry wants to to disrupt it, or at least to uh, to erode parts of the market from an incumbent uh, uh, company. And in this case, these have a very strong you know, urge to to be noticed, uh, to be easy to use, to be adopted very quickly. You see, for example, we didn't, we didn't have an example here, but in the, mar in the market of, uh, you know, insurance companies. There's a lot of online ones uh, that see the big bucks uh, that uh, the existing historical companies are making, and they're trying to gain the market with the trick of saying, okay, you don't have to leave your home, everything is on, is on your smartphone. Also in the banks, in the banking uh, applications. And there was some, uh, some screenshot by uh, probably a couple by the hype, no? I don't know, maybe here in Italy is known that there's a company called Hype. It's basically a spin-off of a real bank, no? Banca Sella, here in, in Piemonte, that created an only digital credit card. And it's very common among young people who don't own a real um, bank account yet because they don't have a, you know, a salary, and so it, would, it wouldn't justify the expenses but they can start very early to have their own money, separate from their parents and so on, very easy to use, or everything on their smartphone and so on. So they were actually um, stealing customers from other companies thanks to the user experience that was very well targeted, uh, targeted to that specific population of users. So in that case, you can even enter, you can even fight or win some, some part of the battle against bigger and uh, more established companies. Um, work versus entertainment is also interesting because usually if something is done for entertainment, uh, you should have pleasure in doing that, okay? If something is done for work, maybe you are forced to do that. So even if it is not pleasant, even if it creates problems, hmm, when you have to enroll to an, to an exam, even if it's difficult, uh, you have to do it, okay? You're not going to drop university because of, you, of a usability problem. So you have to fight against the problems in order to get what you want to want to work done, what you need to be done. Hmm? Uh, in the case of entertainment, of course, if it's not uh, you know, nice to use, uh, you will just drop it. And um, and another comparison that, that you know, I saw that some companies have a uh, sort of an off offline business. And they use the application just for showing information, for giving information, for telling you, for presenting themselves. But then you must go somewhere else uh, to work with them. And they have a lesser incentive, of course, uh, rather than companies that, that only have or primarily have an online presence, where they get their existence, their budget, their business, from the online part. Okay, it may seem obvious, of course, but it means that they put different care about the interfaces. Okay, 
So, uh, uh, some examples. Hmm? Uh, I just picked some more or less at random just to give you some. Uh, this is one of the public institutions uh, with uh, Azienda Sanitaria Locale. Hmm? Uh, I think uh, confusing is the first word that comes to my mind. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of elements there, a lot of colors, a lot of buttons, but uh, mm, we don't, you know, they made some attempt. Uh, huh? Because, for example, we, ha we have some you know, section with the normal words, with some conventions that, that are respected. But then it's not clear. So is something, you know, who are the users, for example? Okay. The first question, who are the main users of this web page? I, I, you know, I'm not able to, 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 to give you a good answer. Because the first article here is basically for people who, that want to work there. So it looks like, uh, from the first article, to be a website oriented to workers in the health sector. Hmm? Um, oh, sorry. Except uh, all of these other services in the right look like more uh, for general users general citizens that need some services. So even the first page already, we, we are not very sure. No? Uh, again, we, we have some buttons here that should help us you know, navigate the different structures. So maybe here we have different splits, but this is not, <laughs> I, I cannot understand where are these buttons. So because the, the text, uh, we are one, two, three, four, five text labels and three buttons that overlap in a very strange way. So it's a design problem, of course, but design pro problem that makes that session totally unusable, totally useless. Hmm? I feel that something is strange. I, no, it's, I, don't, I don't even try to, to understand it. Hmm? But again, they're mixing organization and data, so the internal organization with the indice delle prestazioni, the list, uh, of the services they give. And what's the difference between servizi, service, and prestazione that I don't know how to translate? May, are they the same thing or not? Hmm? So, again, there wasn't a good choice of the, tar of the target population for the website. Probably should have, a, maybe, I would have probably pushed for a front page oriented to the citizens that are, of course, 100 times more numerous than, than the, the workers, and then a section for the workers that you can access with one click uh, on the home page, but not, not mixing the information there, hmm? for example. Uh, so about consistency and standards, of course, we are falling very short. Um, recognition, that I recall, again, there's not much recognition to make here. Uh, we have a lot of many different colors that don't create a convention. No? There, there are no rules. So it looks like that they just try to, to change the colors. Also, you know, in a way that no, you would never dress with two colors alike in this way, okay? Like your shirt and, and, uh, and, and trousers with this couple of colors because they're really not nice. Uh, together, but they don't care probably. No? They just wanted a, a different color from the one that already, already existed. Um, so for the, they try to do a minimalistic design, but the aesthetics totally, totally failed, basically. And this is common to, to many websites. This one is, is not very crowded. No? There are some that are worse. Uh, even this one, if I got the, GTT website for, it's more probably, maybe for two reasons, mostly. To buy tickets or, or to find the route. Yeah, there are some other cases where I want to learn about uh, 
the, the tariffs or the, mm, the possibilities when I want to, but again, here we, they are mixing, uh, you know, Bandi and Gardapalto is something for uh, business to business relationships, uh, and uh, Proposioni per gli abbonati, where they're trying to sell something that, uh, to the people that are already customers. Huh? Uh, there was some jargon here, Corsia Riservata, what is that? Okay. Corsia Riservata, okay, in Italian means the, the lane reserved for the buses and the trams. Huh? But here is some sort of internal jargon for their newsletter. It's the name of the newsletter. Mm, okay, if you want to give a fancy name to your newsletter, please do, but in the button you should write newsletter. And so that people know what is this button, otherwise it's just confusing. But you are mixing with the same style, with the same color, information which is from totally different areas, which has totally different target users. Mm? Um, This, this part uh, is, could be interesting hmm, because they're telling you real-time information about, okay, line number two is now suspended until further notice, but they're mixing real-time information with uh, long-standing long information. So there's an event on, on su next Sunday, uh, so they're mixing events and uh, real-time information. That will be probably be separated. They try to separate in some way with these icons but unless you are very uh, good enough uh, and you want to spend some time, you know, it's difficult to understand what they mean and why sometimes they're missing. So it's, not, it's an attempt, probably they're, they're feeling that something is missing, but they went the wrong way in trying to fix it. Okay, with some icon, which is not uh, conventional, is not directly understandable. So it doesn't speak for itself. It's just an, an extra question, it's not an answer no, to the problem. Um, and we have e-commerce here, we have e-commerce there again. We have uh, abonamenti and tickets. So what's the difference between the tickets and the e-commerce for buying tickets or buying subscriptions? So you see that there's actually, what it turns out that these two sections only give you information about the subscription or information about the tickets, and to buy them, really, you should go there. But why huh? do you have to separate them? Yes? The colors. Um, okay, here, I, I, they probably made a choice. They said, okay, the colors of Turing are yellow and blue. So we will only use uh, yellow and blue, which it's, uh, it's acceptable, yes. Um, except for this uh, new, new entry. Um, the problem here is that probably there are, this, this little button here uh, looks like there should be different categories about the same thing. In act actually, they're not. So probably if, if, we do, if, we do, ah, sorry. if we don't want to um, change the colors because it was a formal decision about the style, I sh we should probably move some of these items somewhere else. So we ask ourselves, okay, we imagine we like the design. We want to have this list of buttons here. So the question I would ask myself is what are the six or five or six most important functions or most important services that I should offer to my users? I put them there, okay? As long as they are of the same type, okay? So, uh, and then the rest will be moved. Uh, they have this sort of containers there. So probably I would have a container for, you know, um, company information. So in this company information, I would put the newsletter, I would put, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, was that, uh, uh, yeah, this one, Bandi Gardafalto for uh, new calls uh, and, and par accessibility also. Mm -hmm. So something which is not for regular travelers, but for information about how they organize travels. Okay, so even if by keeping the same design and the same colors, uh, 
it's try to move uh, stuff which are more semantic relationships closer and in the same and render it in the same graphical way as as other stuff okay um, okay this one these two are, were easy no it's uh, crowded in the right in the left case uh, we still have some grids that try to drive us let's say uh, but until we read everything uh, it's very difficult to to know uh, we have uh, some categories comunità servizi forum case lavori in vendita they are totally inconsistent so these are for sale okay in vendita houses and if I have a house for sale, where should I put it? Here or there? And uh, community, what does it mean? Actually, they are selling any, or they're exchanging animals, for example, but animals is here and animals is also there. Maybe in one case they're exchanging the animal itself, in the other case they're exchanging the services for animals. But you really need to read all of them and to think. And maybe you have a guess about what you will find there. Hmm? And this one is also bad for the uh, layout point of view. But this is um, a good chance no, for giving some objectivity to, to the reason why these two designs are bad. No? For example, there was one so-called X law, it's an experimental law, okay, that tells us what is the time we need to process a list of, uh, of elements, a list of alternatives in a, in a given interface, in a given moment, okay? So we have a so-called uh, reaction time. The time we need uh, to make a decision on the item that we want to choose. So, and of course, uh, the more items we are showing on the screen, more time we are asking to the user. It's more or less a logarithmic uh, uh, relationship with some constant coefficient that depends, of course, case by case by the interface. Okay? <coughs> so especially at the beginning, this logarithm uh, increases very uh, quickly. Then after a while, it more or less settles and so if you have 100 items or 150, it doesn't change so much, okay? But the problem is not getting to this plateau. The problem is trying to let the user work on the initial part of this curve, where the logarithm is basically still linear, and uh, try to avoid increasing the number of options where the reaction time can increase more significantly. Mm -hmm. So trying to uh, make some choices for the users before. Instead of putting every possibility in front of them, choose some categories, make some filtering, make some grouping, and show the different choices progressively, okay? One by one, one step, and then they will act very quickly, they can go to the next step, and so on. Um, if possible, try to avoid at all, having too many categories, too many actions, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, these are other, another couple of examples that show the same or similar problems. The, the one on the left is just a category for the different coins, okay? So the, the website that, are, that has information about all sorts of coins, and on the left menu, they, they have all the different countries and historical periods for the different uh, you know, types of, of and this is a very hard to use menu because there's no space between the items. There's no grouping. You have a long list and you must really pick the right one. It's an execution problem. You must click in the right place. And they are all very close, so there's no space for error. Even a couple of pixels above or below, you are clicking the wrong category and you need to go back. And the same is for this other screen on the right, which is from, from a, a video game. And it's quite strange because video games tend to be very 
careful about this. But here they try to put everything on screen. And so there's a lot of information which is very difficult to process at the same time. And also the actions you can do are all related to small buttons here, for example, on different parts of the screen. So first of all, it's difficult to, to tell buttons from non-buttons. So where should they click? They are using just one single color for everything. So it's not very easy to understand which are the values that they can change, which are the actions or the buttons that they can click. There's no clue, okay? Um, visual clue, I, I mean. And then they're, they're actually very small. And so in this case, when we are talking about small elements, uh, there's another no, empirical uh, equation that's called the, the Fitz law that uh, gives me the time to complete a movement to hit a target, a precise target, okay? And uh, this time depends basically on two factors, okay? The distance and the size of the target. It means that if I have to move my mouse, my pointer, my finger to another area of the screen, okay, uh, with a fast movement, if I want to hit the target, the target should be large. If the target is small, I will take, if it's distant, I will take more time because I need to reach the area and then slow down to find the real point, okay? So you can have small elements if they are, if the movements of the user are confined to a small areas. If the user needs to move, you see, in a, in a large area here, then you should have more space. Otherwise, it will take more time. It's a, a space-time trade-off. You are occupying less space, but your user will use more time. So what, what is more important for the users? Saving pixels or saving time? For, for, a, for saving time to the users, you should have um, the items, close together and large enough. The distance between different items should be reduced, so having groups of buttons, group of menus, everything in the same part of the page. It's good because you don't have to wander through the different uh, parts of the page. And their size should be large. And size including the margins, so including also the space in between them. Okay. So in this, in this way, the users will be faster in selecting the items. So they are very I'll say, um, easy, to, easy to apply criteria, maybe. Uh, this is not really the time. It's called the index of difficulty because translating into seconds, again, depends on some coefficients, that, uh, some say, factors that should only be measured uh, experimentally, so there's not really a formula for giving you the time. But at least we have the feeling about what, uh, what, our, what are our design options. Uh, we identify which are the items that the users are going to use, make them wide enough, create a portion of the area and not all the screen, not disperse them across all the screen, but select only a portion of the area and try to limit the number of options. In this way, we will have users that will be quicker to interact uh, and will make less errors, okay? The fit law doesn't tell you what's the, 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 the error rate uh, that depends, of course, on, on missing the target. Huh? It's, uh, uh, this one was very interesting. The submission was very interesting because actually it defies uh, all the general rules about big companies, uh, successful companies making good interfaces. And uh, the, uh, the comment was actually the forward button is in the wrong position, is on the left, instead of being on the right, which is where it's, it's normal place. And on the right we find a, a, a cancel button. And I don't have any explanation why. Uh, 
but uh, actually it's, it's, uh, it's good to notice this kind of problems. There's nothing wrong with that. Both of them are clear recognizable uh, sections, both for the name, and this one looks like a button, and this one you see that it's the, the text is the same color as the button color. So it's easy to recognize as a, as a link because these are only the two elements with this color on the screen. So the, we can recognize them, they are the only two, let's say, actionable items, but they are swapped. Uh, this one was also interesting as a mission. This uh, is not very readable, it's booking. And so I was surprised, okay, why is booking uh, mentioned as a, as a bad submission, as a bad solution, or a bad interface? It's very successful. It's a bit confusing, there's a lot of information on the booking website. But at first I didn't recognize because booking is always full of information. Actually, this is the back end, sorry, the back office interface. So the interface where if you have a property that you want to list on booking, you have to go through this interface to enlist your property, give information about where it is, how many bedrooms, how many facilities, and so on you have. And if on one side you have a very, uh, you know, um, strong interface from the front-facing part, uh, this interface is very you know, uh, empty, feels empty, that doesn't help you a lot. It's, it's, there are just long forms to fill in a white page. There is no preview of the effect of what you are typing. In the front end, you will see your property with pictures, with all the you know, icons and whatever. But when you're entering the data, you don't see how the user will see it. You have no way. The only way is to complete the insertion, wait, it, wait for it to be approved, and then have a look. So it's a longer uh, cycle. So it looks like they care more about their users rather than, let's say, end users, buyers, rather than people that are listing their activities. I, I'm not very familiar with the business model of booking.com. I don't think that the big, uh, maybe, maybe for the, let's say, big hotels or whatever, they are providing the service of listing their property. And this is just an interface if you have a small house, somewhere, your small bed and breakfast, uh, you can upload it, but you're not contributing too much of my uh, business. So I, not, I don't care too much about, about you. I think this is the message that I think that they gets through. I don't know if, there, I don't know if it's the intended message, but it's the one that gets through. A very powerful and rich website, when I go there to analyze my property, it becomes a very boring, and uh, not helpful website. Hmm? This space could be used to help me fill the information. If I fill this information, it's something for my business. I'm a no, I, an owner of, of a property, of a hotel, or bed and breakfast, or whatever, and so it's crucial. It depends uh, on this one feeling, it depends my my success. Hmm? But they're not helping me very much. Um, on the other hand, what I heard from some owners of our bed and breakfast is that uh, the marketing staff for booking are very aggressive. So there are people actively calling all the bed and breakfast, oh, you are not listed here, do you want me to list you? So probably they are probably they're selling the service of creating your, your, uh, your online presence there. Hmm? So. It's all speculation, of course, but the user experience and the business models often go hand in hand. They are, one is the consequence of the other. Um, this is another interesting comparison to make. Uh, there are two schools. The one on the right was the only one that was listed in the Hall of Fame, and uh, the person who submitted say, uh, he said, okay, I just wanted to show one example uh, of a good school website. 
uh, because there are some, okay? And so it was listed in the good examples. And you see that the difference at a glance, okay? Uh, and again, uh, the idea is that on the right, you know, what's the first see you see, your first action you see, yeah, access to family, access for teachers. I think these are, these are the only two, let's say, uh, actions that are, are let's say, useful daily. Uh, the families, so students and parents, and uh, the teachers should enter their internal functionalities. Everything else is in the background. So there are some news, of course, there are some news. There are some menu with a different description and so on. But uh, they are priori prioritizing the most important action from the users. Okay? Uh, okay, this is a not, not a very nice uh, picture to put here because it breaks totally the design of the website. Here, it's very difficult to find uh, the main. So what are they prioritizing? Some news. News, events, news here, and notices there, and the information about the, the school, uh, official documents about the teaching. And so if I am a parent or a student there, where should I go? First of all, I don't care about any of this because I'm already maybe enrolled into, into the school. Even if I was to select the school, there's nothing here that gives me information. Okay, so I don't know where to go, and uh, if I really, probably will be one of these banners here, but I'm not able to see one that gives me information that is okay, the link for students, for families, this is for enrolling, it's an online, probably, but if I'm already a student, I don't, I, don't, I don't care. So actually, there's a lot of information except what I need. Um, and so I think this should be you know, something to learn, okay? Um, a lot of people that are managing. By the way, this layout here in the right uh, is uh, copied by the national initiative uh, where they are providing already templates at the, at the national level. They're already providing templates uh, for uh, um, municipality website for a school website uh, it's called the designers Italia uh, they have everything on github where you can go there and copy their templates they have CSS they have HTML they have uh, example pages uh, you, and you can go there and just copy it and uh, and have you know, a look uh, and feel in similar similar to this one it's based on, on bootstrap and grid layouts and so on uh, so it's even uh, so qu quicker to do today. Today we have the tools. Huh? The problem is that you need some uh, courage to, to throw all of this away and start, in from, start from, from scratch and uh, to understand that the priorities for the students are not about uh, the new, you know, the last uh, talk you gave or the last presentation you gave into your school or the fact that you you know, organize some event uh, somewhere else, you know, because in the day-to-day -day life, uh, uh, these are the priorities. Another surprising, probably is the last one, I, I, if I remember well. No? Okay. The second last one. Um, is this difference. It was surprising because these two screenshots are very similar. One is Netflix and the other is Amazon Prime Video. They do the same, they're direct competitors, but all of the Netflix screens were in the Hall of Fame and most of the Amazon Prime screens were in the Hall of Shame. So this is the importance of the details. They look like the same, but when you try to interact with them, to decide whether you want to see the details about uh, uh, a movie or a TV series or to start it. They are behaving in a different way, okay? So, um, on one hand, uh, it's, uh, you know, Netflix is more consistent. 
you select the item, you go to the, to the description page, and then you start it. Uh, Amazon it depends. Uh, sometimes it will start uh, when you click the, in, the, in the suggestions. Uh, sometimes you need to go to the arrow, and sometimes the, so. Uh, they are provided the same service. So the problem is not uh, once they play the, the, the video or once they play the movie. More or less, they, are, they have the same functionality. But in browsing and selecting and checking the information, they are superficially similar, but in the details, in the actions, uh, what happens is that when using Amazon Prime, you are wondering more. You take more time in navigating through and finding what you want, and sometimes you have to go back uh, because you chose uh, the, the wrong um, option. And then, of course, the experience is much different. Uh, here we don't have the information about uh, what you selected, whether you are using that uh, on a computer or on a te television. So if you are using that on a television, when you have only the four arrows to navigate, uh, there is this very bad feature of having the, the left menu. So if you go to the left, uh, you have the menu that appears, uh, and if you're navigating with a remote control, you have to click maybe seven times uh, uh, on the left to, to, to reach the menu. So it's uh, why, and with, with the mouse, it's much easier. You, got, you, just, you just go on the left, and the menu will appear. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't have the information here in the submissions whether you are you're mentioning okay, the on TV experience or the on computer or the smartphone or tablet experience is still different because the interaction details um, are different also. Mm -hmm. uh, here also we have a lot of small widgets. Small, uh, so whether you click, uh, you know, on the on the arrow or on the title, and in some cases we have an arrow uh, near to the title, so it's um, we have small details that give you different actions and this okay this uh, the this one was uh, the um, what we already mentioned about uh, uh, discord so this is discord against discord so the same application and several people three or four put it into hall of uh, shame and maybe four or five in the hall of fame so there was a, an even split and the application is the same. But this, I think, uh, is uh, what you already commented before. Um, having an application which is designed for a given community of users, and now we are trying to sell it uh, as a general tool. So this core was born with a very specific set of users. Now you remember it was for, for gamers that needed to, to chat in real time while they were playing their games. That was the, their you know, starting point. And then they had the chat also. And, uh, and now they are trying to rebrand themselves into a more general purpose chat application. But their model with the servers and channels doesn't map too well into the, you know, for example, uh, Slack as groups and channels. So a group is easier to understand rather than a um, Discord server. Because also Discord servers uh, can contain channels from other servers, which is something that, okay, it's very powerful, but uh, what is the, um, so the mental model behind that. In Discord, it's clear. I have my own server where I publish my games, uh, when, I pub when I chat with me, I play, and they can pull in the channels of my, friend, of my friends. So it's a very peer-to-peer, -peer informal settings when everybody has the server, it customizes it, and so on. If we, are talk if we are translating them into a general purpose chat application, then there would be some more structure. For example, the, the groups of uh, uh, of Slack or the Teams, uh, of Microsoft Teams, uh, when there's an organization in which you are communicating. So there are channels inside containers and these containers are sealed. This is also one of the problems of Slack. 
no? you mentioned. Okay, we have several containers and they are all independent from each other, but I am the same person. So I need to split, I have different password, different icon, different accounts if I have four different Slack groups. And this again is a consequence of the initial model of Slack. Uh, there was thought for having different companies, one Slack per company, and right now we are creating them for every smaller group and you have a, you know, a multiplication of accounts and they, on top of that, with, instead of solving the problem of having many, many accounts, they are adding functionality for recovering one account and logging again, and you never know where you're logging on your computer, on your phone, and so on. Okay, they're making it a mess. Instead of saying, I have an account, tell me which are the groups uh, that I've subscribed to, and show, I can select which, which one I want to show or not. Um, Discord has a single account, huh? so in that part, uh, it's uh, easier because I, you have an account and you may have, ac have access to different servers, but then all these uh, ch channel that may, have, may ha appear in different servers, uh, it's also not, not, not clear. So what I'm saying is that when you're taking an application that had a specific role and was performing very well in that role, and you're trying to morph it into something else because maybe you want to expand your market, you are probably not going to be very successful because the, you are pulling in or trying to pull in more users that have different needs or different mental models and they probably won't. And you are trying to fit the user's mind into your algorithm, into your software structure and then work this way, okay? So it would, better, it would be better to maybe to design a different version with a different working mode instead of try, just trying to add new functionalities, trying to attract people that will find even more complexity because there's a new functionality in top of a basic model that doesn't fit uh, how we are thinking or what you are expecting. Okay, so there was just a, you know, a quick overview, some, some thoughts, some uh, comments that uh, um, came out, but um, I think it's uh, useful you know, every now and then just to stop uh, De de developing our project and trying to look at other projects uh, and see what they did well, what they didn't do so well, and uh, what is the relationship between the user experience and the business model behind that. Okay, so thanks for being with me today. We also shaved off five minutes. <laughs>